Today, the latest weapons, coupled with the fighting skill of the American soldier, stand ready, on the alert all over the world, to defend this country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. The place was an army supply depot somewhere overseas. Pilferage of food and clothing was rapidly getting out of hand. To stop the theft of thousands of dollars worth of vital supplies, a small group of specially trained men and their assistants was added to guard the installation. The pilferage quickly dropped to zero. Credit for this achievement belongs mostly to the assistants, the army dogs. Today, the big picture will take you on a scouting patrol somewhere in Korea and to a war dog training center in Germany. The place is Korea. The time is early morning. The mission is to reconnoiter the enemy position to try and pick up a prisoner. You can't see anybody out there in front of you, and you can't hear anybody. That's why you've got a dog for a point man. If there is anybody out there, he can smell them. The soldier who's handling this dog has lived with him for months. They know each other very well. The dog seems to sense the excitement. He is quiet, but very much alert. His keen senses analyze the air. Now it's the handler's job to interpret the dog's actions. What is it, boy? And where? Enemy, over there. The dog's job is done. Soldiers will carry on from here. And they flush a covey of enemy. Caught completely unawares, mission accomplished. There is no need for combat patrols today, but practice problems are necessary to keep your army prepared. Here at Langreese, Germany, men and dogs are trained together for service in Europe. The men assigned for dog training are carefully chosen. Private Pitts, I have here your application for training with the dog training branch. It shows that you've been in the Army for seven months. How do you like it? I like it fine, sir. What were your hobbies in civilian life? Fishing and hunting. Have you ever had dogs as pets? Yes, sir. What breed of dog did you have? Springer Spaniel. Why do you think you would like to train dogs in the Army? I train dogs as a civilian, and I think I'll do the Army and myself some good. You know they are a pretty large dog, and they can bite. Yes, sir. I know they bite, but I think I can handle them. You also know that these dogs take a lot of patience and hard work to train, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, I think you have the proper qualifications for the job. I wish you the best of luck in your new assignment. Thank you, sir. Your Army maintains war dog training centers in the United States, in the Far East, as well as in Europe. Here, new men arrive at the Quartermaster Training Center at Lengris, Germany. At these centers, man and dog are trained together. They become a team of two, more sensitive, more alert, and more valuable than either was alone. You men have been selected from a large group of volunteers. We feel that you possess the qualities of leadership, courage, initiative, and patience to fulfill the mission of an infantry scout dog platoon. As you know, dogs have been used for military purposes for hundreds of years. The United States Army first used dogs for military use in the last war in World War II. And although your course of instruction here will consist of only 17 weeks, we will make every effort in training you to be able to carry on a training program of your own when you reach your infantry division. Today, you men will be assigned the dogs that you will be working with for the next 17 weeks. These dogs, by nature, are quick to learn. The dogs will learn faster than you will. But with your effort and with your patience, we will be able 
To train you and in turn your dog will automatically become trained. While the men are learning the fundamentals, the dogs that they will work with are being acquired by the army. Not any dog will do. They too must be carefully chosen. Here, German civilians prepare to show off their dogs before the keen eyes of the United States purchasing officers. Walking the round is the first step. But here's one pooch who seems a little reluctant to join the army. Next, the dogs are given the gunfire test to determine if they will remain calm under battle noises. Here's one fellow that fails. Then comes the aggravation test. A special leash is placed on each dog. A young German and his dog, Rouser, are first. The test is to determine the dog's aggressiveness when annoyed. No Ferdinand here. Rouser passes this test with flying colors and moves on to the medical inspection. This is to ensure that the army is purchasing a healthy dog. The gauze muzzle is to ensure that the veterinarian keeps his digits intact. Then the vet gives Rouser a thorough going over. He finds him to be an A1 shape and ready to carry on in the famous tradition established by the war dogs of World War II and Korea. Rouser is the name and he's a good one. Those dogs like Rouser that have passed all tests are crated and shipped by truck to the Quartermaster War Dog School at Lengreese, Germany, in the foothills of the Bavarian Alps. A truck loaded with canine passengers is a familiar sight to the MP at the gate. This school has been training dogs since the end of World War II. Literally thousands of scout and sentry dogs and their soldier handlers have passed through these portals. This kennel area will be Rouser's new home for the approximate 17 weeks that he will train here. Hey, easy fellows, that's a service dog inside. Each dog is placed in his own individual kennel to await assignment to his particular soldier handler. How do you like it, boy? While Rouser is getting accustomed to his new quarters, the soldier handlers are learning all about those quarters, how to ventilate them in summer, how to keep them warm in winter with the sliding partition you see here. They learn everything about the care and cleaning of kennels. Next, they learn how to care for the animal itself. They learn the dog's physical features, how to check for cuts and bruises, and how to groom the dog carefully to keep him always in the best of condition.
Private Pitts pays close attention. Soon he'll be getting a dog assigned to him. And that day comes quickly. For at the next morning formation, the sergeant tells them that this is the day they'll get their dogs. What small boy wouldn't want to trade places with Pitts right now? And maybe Private Pitts himself is a little excited about the prospect. Perhaps the march to the kennel area seems long. Perhaps the old familiar signs look a little different today. And perhaps another formation seems unnecessary. Won't they ever get to giving out those dogs? And then suddenly Private Pitts hears his name. Private Pitts, you are assigned Rouser, Kennel B6. And so Rouser and Pitts get acquainted. This is the beginning of a strong personal bond between man and dog. Affection is the foundation of the training here. Without it, there can be little progress. And so Private Pitts and Rouser start out for their first work period together. Against a backdrop of the beautiful Bavarian Alps, they walk to the training area. This is canine basic training. Here, commands like down and stay are mastered. Dogs learn by associating certain actions with other actions and sounds. Therefore, at first, the hand and leash are used to guide the dog's actions when he hears the command. Later, the hand signal and the tug on the leash will be unnecessary. This dog is well trained. He has been given the commands down and stay. The soldier purposely tries to distract him, but without success. A lesson well learned is rewarded with affection. Now Private Pitts and Rouser start their basic training together. The leash is used first in conjunction with the vocal command. The leash indicates to the dog what is expected. Heel. Sit. Down. Private Pitts tests Rouser on the two commands, stay and come. Good dog. Now let's try crawling. Looks like the canine version of infantry basic. Hey, keep it down. Now for a little close order drill. To the rear, march. And when there's a break, man and dog can play together, allowing them to get to know each other better. As the training progresses, the dogs are given more difficult actions to perform. Over and under. Abilities like these can really pay off in a combat situation. is important too. Dogs must be kept clean and healthy, but grooming also gives soldier and dog the chance to mutually build their affection and understanding for one another. If at any time the soldier handler finds cuts or bruises on his dog, 
he immediately takes him to the veterinary hospital. Here, the animal receives the very best in medical treatment. Rouser is a good patient, even with a cut forefoot. He trusts Pitts implicitly, and Private Pitts reciprocates the compliment. And all the dogs in the army get the best canine chow there is, personally served by their soldier handlers. To Rouser, this is steak and french fries with all the trimmings. And after lunch, more training. This time on the graduated jump. It looks easy now, but just wait a minute. The sergeant here is making things more difficult on purpose. But these dogs are pretty far advanced in their training now. They take this jump with ease. A little more rugged is the canine equivalent of the infiltration corps. About this time, dogs are classified into scout or sentry dogs. Sentry dogs will guard installations. Scout dogs will go out on patrol. It all depends on the dog's individual characteristics, which assignment he receives. But even if the training is tough and disciplined, there is always time for some of the old familiar dog tricks like sit up and beg. Now, men and dogs are ready for decoy practice. Soldiers are concealed somewhere out there. The dog's job is to find them. There they are. In practice, the dog is allowed to give chase just to keep his interest up. Go get them, boy. And afterwards, always praise for a job well done. Finally, the 17 weeks course is over. Soldiers and dogs are ready to graduate together to carry on the tradition of service won in World War II and Korea. And then comes the day when Private Pitts and Rouser get their assignment. Somewhere in Europe, they'll be stationed as a scout or sentry team on the alert and ready to assist our army in its mission of defending the American way of life against all aggression. These two good friends who will now share the same service career wave farewell to Lang Greece and the Quartermaster School, where they first met and trained together. As Private Pitts and Rouser head for their new assignment, let's focus our big picture cameras on the feminine side of your army overseas. For these WAC specialists, the day begins early. Six a.m. is six a.m. wherever you are, and it's always too early. But to a wax specialist named Pat, stationed in Kaiserlautern, Germany, this six a.m. rising has become routine. And it's pretty much routine for all the other wax stationed around the world. It's really not very difficult. You just do at six what most people do at seven or eight. It's the army way of getting a head start on everybody else. A little water on the face, and things are looking up. Pat selects her uniform with care. A woman in the army must not only be concerned with the esprit of the service, she must also think of herself. Let's face it, a girl likes to be admired, and an attractive whack is, well, more attractive. 
So Pat gives the mirror one final glance before facing the outside world. Pat is a photographic specialist, third class, and she works here in the User of Pictorial Center, Kaiserlautern, Germany. Every day she checks the assignment board. Today, it's aerial views of Germany. Tomorrow, it could be anything from covering a battle maneuver to shooting pictures of a VIP inspection. A photographer's life in or out of the army is never a dull one. Pat is an expert with a camera. She was a photographer in civilian life and is a fine example of how your army today makes full use of civilian skills and aptitudes. But she knows, too, that the army gives her advanced training and experience that she could get no other way. And like all good photographers, she knows that any picture assignment begins with a thorough inspection of her equipment. All set and ready to go. photography, the helicopter is being used more and more. Its excellent maneuverability and hovering qualities make it ideal for this kind of work. Pat meets her pilot, one of the many flying officers in the Army today. An open cockpit like this makes a safety belt a must. But that same openness makes it a photographer's dream. You can shoot from any direction without obstruction. Again, Pat checks her equipment just to make sure everything's okay. This is the sort of experience it's not so easy to get in civilian life. Even though a copter can hover indefinitely, Pat gets ready and lines up her shot ahead of time. One nice thing about this sort of photography, you can get any angle on the subject you want. A little higher, a little lower, it's all very easy in a helicopter. How about over that way just a little? Swell. gets her picture. Her assignment completed, Pat can relax on the way home and enjoy the unique experience of a helicopter ride. Thanks and a salute for her officer pilot, Pat returns to the pictorial center. A few minutes in the developer tells the story. Pat gets her excellent results because she's not only an experienced camera woman, but a trained technician as well. With three prints for good measure, Pat sees her assignment sheet. Between them, they select one for reproduction in the Army publication that first requested the coverage. Good food, good laughter, good cheer ever after. It's an old world saying that applies just as well in this modern Army mess hall. 
Pat has a date tonight, but with dinner over, she still has time to visit the PX and indulge in a woman's prerogative to search and search until she finds just the right lipstick to go with the dress she'll be wearing that evening. And this is Pat's date, who is waiting, as most dates do. Having bought the lipstick to go with the dress, Pat now searches again to find the right dress to go with the lipstick. And all the while, her date waits and wonders what makes women the way they are. And just when he's most exasperated, Pat appears and all is forgiven. Soon, they'll both be off for an evening of fun and entertainment. But all too soon again, it'll be 6 a.m., and Pat will begin another day in the wax, the Women's Army Corps. Whether it's taking a photograph for an Army publication or performing any of their other numerous functions, the wax around the world are an invaluable asset to your army and its mission of peace through strength. This is Sergeant Stuart Queen, inviting you to be with us again next week for another look at The Big Picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station. You too can be an important part of the big picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.